We have different ways of configuring a network device, like a router as an example. We could connect via Telnet or preferably a secure shell and access the command line interface, the CLI, and we could give commands there. Or we could use something like SNMP, the Simple Network Management Protocol. SNMP has been around for a while, it's gone through different versions, and SNMP version 3 has added quite a bit of security, but honestly, there's a lot of SNMP version 2C out there which is not nearly as secure. And while SNMP is technically capable of doing configuration on a device, most people just use it for monitoring, and it's not going to be a scalable configuration option for us in today's networks. So in this video, we're going to take a look at a new approach to configuration. Instead of using something like Secure Shell or SNMP, we're going to use NetConf. And why do we need this? Well, for one thing, we want our applications to have a deeper integration into the network. And with DevOps, we've got the ability to develop and deliver software to network devices, not just by traditional network engineers, but also developers. And we also have cloud resources and web applications that need a tighter integration with the network. So while SNMP used to do a great job of monitoring the network, it's not going to meet our configuration needs today. For example, we want a way that the network can provide a service across multiple devices. And we're much more concerned about that instead of doing configuration on devices one at a time. And we want our solution to be vendor interoperable. Different vendors have different syntax to do things like, for example, adding an IP address to an interface. We want to be able to say, here's what we want to do, and it just occurs. In other words, we want to express our intent. That's why Cisco often uses the term intent-based networking. Well, NetConf is going to allow us to do that. And the term NetConf comes from network configuration. We just combine those words together. And NetConf is an IETF standard. It was released originally way back in 2006. There's been updates since then, but 2006 is when it was originally introduced. Now let's talk about how it works. And we're actually going to go out and do a live demo later in this video. We're going to see it in action. But to begin to understand how NetConf works, let's go back and think about the traditional client server model. With a client server model, we would have a client that maybe wants to retrieve a file from a server. Well, it's going to send a request to that server, and the server might respond with a reply saying, OK, here's your file. Well, in the NetConf world, instead of having a client and a server, we're going to have a manager and an agent. And the manager is running some sort of application, like a Python application, and it's going to send some sort of request to an agent. And that agent might be a router, it might be a switch as a couple of examples. This request might be a request for information, or the request might be a configuration request, where, as an example, we're setting an IP address of an interface. And the format of this request is typically going to be using the Yang data model. And we talked about Yang earlier in this course, and we're going to review it briefly later on in this video. But Yang, we said, was our way of modeling data. And that Yang data is encoded in XML format using XML tags. And what transports this Yang data encoded in XML is NetConf. And by the way, NetConf, it typically uses a secure shell to communicate between devices. And certainly we could go in and use secure shell ourselves and give commands from that command line interface, but we don't want to do that. Instead, we want to use one of the utilities that are out there. And I'm going to show you NC Client as a utility that we could use. But for now, I just need you to understand that this is the format. We've got the data representing interface parameters or routing protocol parameters as a couple of examples. And we've got that data in a Yang data model. And it's encoded in XML inside of XML tags. And that's being transported using NetConf, going back and forth between the manager and the agent. Now let's do a quick review of Yang data modeling that we discussed earlier in the course. Back earlier in the course, you might remember that I gave you an example of an Apple iPhone. I said that we could use the Yang data model to describe an iPhone. This model could specify the different characteristics of an iPhone. For example, we could say, what model is it? And we've got these options from current iPhones at the time of this recording. We could specify the display size available. We could specify the color. We could specify the storage capacity. And my phone, as an example, is an Apple iPhone 11 Pro Max. It's got a 6.5 inch display, the color is space gray, and it's got a storage capacity of 256 gigabytes. That's a way to model an iPhone. Well, with Yang, we're typically going to model the characteristics of a network device. Here's an example that I showed you earlier in the course. 
This is an IETF model of a network interface. And by the way, some of the Yang data models are created by a standards body like the IETF, and some Yang data models are created by vendors like Cisco. Now up at the top, we see that we have a module name. This is the name of the IETF Yang data model. It's called IETF-Interfaces, and this model has a couple of containers. The top container is called Interfaces, and the bottom container is called Interfaces-State. And the RW next to the Interfaces up top, that means that we can write information, because RW stands for Read Write. So in this example, we can set the name and the description as a couple of examples. However, the interface state container says RO for read only. Here, we can only retrieve information such as when was the last change made or what is the device's physical address. And under each container, we have a list. And take a look at the top container if you would. It's got a list called RW interface star. And then in brackets, we have name. What goes in this name field? That's kind of acting like a variable. We could put different interface instances in there, maybe gigabit ethernet one or gigabit ethernet two and so on. In other words, we can have multiple instances of this list when we're populating it with real data for real network devices. And this is just the structure and the format that we're going to be using and that variable, the name in brackets, we're going to refer to that as a key. And the characteristics under the list, like RW description question mark, that's called a leaf. And notice that leaf, if you look over to the right, has the word string. That tells us that this is the data type of this leaf. It's populated with a string. If we look further down though, we see that the type of the data for the RO last change question mark leaf is yang colon date hyphen and hyphen time. What's going on here? Well here, the type of data is actually another data model itself. It's a data model within a data model. Specifically, it's a model that shows how we represent date and time. And again, this model is the structure that we're going to use to populate with real data. Now let's take a look at an example where we have some actual real data. And this is encoded in XML format, which is the format that NetConf is going to use when it's sending a request over to an agent. Up at the top, we have interfaces XML NS equals. And then we have the namespace in quotes. And this is all in the interfaces container. Notice we're beginning the container with a tag of interfaces and we're ending the container with a tag of forward slash interfaces. And notice that the first interface node has a name of gigabit ethernet one. The description is don't touch me. And also notice that we have a node within a node. We've got an IPv4 node inside of the interface node, and this is giving us information about that interface's IP version for addressing. We see that the IP address is 10.10.10.10 with a slash 24 subnet mask. And in this example, gigabit ethernet one is the name of a leaf inside of this interface node. And something to understand about Yang is that it wasn't standardized until 2010. But remember I said that NetConf was standardized in 2006? That means that for a while, vendors had to use their own proprietary data modeling. So NetConf was working with vendor-specific data models. But since Yang was standardized, people are gravitating towards using a Yang data model. Now let's take a look at NetConf in action by going out to some real gear that you can access. Cisco does us a huge favor. Cisco DevNet gives us a sandbox of real gear, some of which we can reserve and use and configure to learn, and other devices are on all the time. They're read-only, we're not able to update those, but we can access data from those devices. That's what we're going to do here. The Cisco DevNet Sandbox, at the time of this recording, has a CSR1000V router, and it's running a Cisco IOS XE. And what we want to do in this video is have a Python program that's going to use a Yang data model to pull down the configuration of that router that's out at the Cisco DevNet Sandbox. And by the way, Cisco DevNet is continually updating and changing what they have available. They do an amazing job. All that to say that what I'm showing you in this video may be a little bit different when you go out to Cisco DevNet, but they're very likely to have something out there that is going to be a read-only router that you're going to be able to connect to. It just might be a different sandbox when you go check it out. So let's hop out to that live interface.
Well, we're setting out at the DevNet site now. Specifically to get to this page, I went to developer.cisco.com slash site slash sandbox. And please keep in mind that the DevNet folks are continually making improvements and adding things to their site. So it might be a different URL than the one you see in this video, but you can always search for Cisco DevNet Sandbox and find it. But I've already logged in. If you haven't logged in, you need to go ahead and log yourself in. And I'm going to say, go to the Sandbox Catalog. And this is very likely to change by the time you watch this video because they're always adding things. But I'm going to do a search for NetConf. And uh, there are a few that say NetConf in them. Here's what I'm looking for iOS XE on a cloud services router. Notice it's always on. We don't have to reserve this. We don't have to set up a VPN connection into the sandbox. We can just click on this and it's going to give us credentials for how we can communicate with this router. Now it's going to be read only, so we're not going to be doing configuration. Otherwise that could cause problems with multiple users doing configurations. So it's going to be read only for us and that's fine. We'll use a Python program that just retrieves information instead of setting information but the concept is the same. Notice here is our host name, and we're going to be using netconf, which is going to be port 10,000 here. We see the username and the password. We're going to be giving those arguments as part of our Python command when we execute the program. If we scroll down just a little bit, we see that we've got DevNet Python code samples. Let's click on that. And you see several different samples that you can go through and explore at your leisure. There's a lot to be learned just by looking through these Python programs. But here, I just want to do a really basic one as an example. Let's get the configuration from this CSR 1000 V router. And I'm going to use NC get config to do that. And here's the Python program. Notice it ends in a .py. I'm going to click on this and I'll say raw, and that's going to give me the actual program. And what I'm going to do is copy this, and I'm going to paste it into a text editor. And let's take a look at some of the things going on here. First, I want you to notice that we're going to be using a couple of modules that you might not have installed. We're going to be using a module called argparse, which is argument parsing, and ncclient is another module. If we don't have those modules, we need to install those. Let's talk about how we do that. To install these extra packages that we need, we're going to be using the Python Package Manager, or PIP for short. Here's the command we use. It's PIP, and we're using version 3.8. I'm going to say PIP install arg parse. Now, again, I've already got it installed, and it says the requirement is already satisfied. So that's telling me that I already have it installed. The other package or the other module we might want to install is NC client. And we can say pip 3.8 install NC client. Again, I've already got it installed and it says the requirement is already satisfied. But now I think we have all of our dependencies in place. So let's take a closer look at this Python file and then let's run it. We've got our packages or our modules installed. Notice that we're gonna be giving some arguments as part of this Python command. We're gonna do a dash dash host, and then we're gonna follow that with the IP address or the domain name of our host. And remember the host, if we go back to our sandbox page, the host is ios-xe-mgmt.cisco.com. So we're going to specify that as an argument as part of our command. Then we'll do a dash u followed by the username, a dash p followed by the password, and a dash dash port followed by the port, which is 10,000. And of course, as part of this Python program, we're going to be referencing a Yang data model. And we can see that Yang data model right here. Now let's save this file. I'm going to say save. In fact, I already have this file saved. I called it nc-get-config.py, and I've got it in a Python directory. Let's go out to that directory. If I do a pwd for present working directory, we see that I'm in my Python directory for my user. Now let's issue this command, and I'll just paste it in to save time. But we're saying Python 3.8 because that's the version of Python we're running. Then we give the name of the Python file, nc-get-config.py. Then we give those arguments. I say dash dash host, followed by the host name that we're given on the sandbox page, dash u, followed by the username of developer, dash p, followed by the password of capital C1SCO12345. 
And for the port number, it told us that for NetConf, we're using 10,000. So we have a dash dash port 10,000. We're ready to press enter. We press enter, we go out to the Cisco DevNet sandbox, and it's going to retrieve the configuration from this CSR 1000V router. And it's going to present it to us, as we see here, in XML format. But XML, one of the great things about XML format is it's very readable. So for example, if we scroll up just a bit, we can see interface information, IP address information. Notice under the interface node, I've got gigabit ethernet one. And we see a description for that interface. We see its IP address is 10.10.20.48. We've got a slash 24 subnet mask. We've also got gigabit ethernet two. And we see its IP address and its subnet mask. If we scroll up just a bit more, we can see a default route that's been entered. Under route, we have a prefix of all zeros and a mask of all zeros. That means a default route. And we're going to be forwarding default routes to a next hop address of 10.10.20.254. And again, because we're working with a router that gives us read-only permissions, we are only able to retrieve some information, but the process is the same. We're typically going to either write our own Python program, or more commonly, we're going to get some existing code from GitHub, and we might modify it based on our needs, and we're going to see if we have all of the packages that are required, and if not, we'll install those, and then we'll run it. And that's a look at how we can use NetConf to, in this case, get some information from a router.